<laughs> While my uh, talk is about uh, the global trends, uh, what I call the global go-to think tanks and the basic meaning there is, uh, those are the, the organizations uh, that uh, policymakers and the public uh, have identified because of their expertise and quality as an institution that they go to when they have a uh, problem or issue uh, that they uh, need to have analysis, quality analysis on. Um, and so I've attempted to globally identify uh, the leading think tanks uh, around the world. Um, I could take questions later on pretty much anything about uh, think tanks. I've just completed a major study, which I'm doing presentations while I'm here, on uh, think tanks and the role in the Obama administration, which is uh, uh, fairly interesting in how uh, the institutions he's identified with um, uh, are an insight into how he will govern. Um, the Think Tank Civil Society Program, which is at the University of Pennsylvania, researches trends and challenges facing think tanks, policymakers, and policy-oriented civil society groups. Um, it is um, dedicated to sustaining, strengthening, and building capacity for think tanks around the world and uh, I maintain the largest, most comprehensive database of think tanks um, around of what is uh, 500, excuse me, 5,465 uh, think tanks. Um, one of my research assistants is here, who's now at LSE, who spent uh, two years helping me uh, make that happen. Um, this is just a, an outline. I'm gonna give a sort of global perspective in terms of uh, the state of think tanks in each region and give you a sense of the top think tanks. Um, but I first wanted to, <coughs> what is, there's this incredible interest which led me to this study in terms of policymakers and the media and foundations uh, that are trying to identify what are the institutions they should invest in, what are the institutions they should go to for advice. Um, and uh, increasingly, government officials um, I think in the past were able to escape responsibility if there was an issue that they, uh, if the minister called them into the office and they didn't know about it. With the age of the internet and complete access and the power of the internet, not being able to uh, have access to and be on top of information is no longer an excuse, which has, uh, for me, brought um, policymakers at every level. Uh, so on this trip, I have been asked to speak to the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, the policy and planning staff at the French Foreign Ministry, at the Belgian Foreign Ministry, at the EU commissioners, all driven with the same motivation as they want to tap into where is the information, who not, and the big challenge is, is not only, um, you know, they don't want all of the ideas, they only want the good ones. And they, and they want those to be sorted and selected for them. <clears throat> From my perspective, this is the definition that I use in terms of think tanks, that, and there are key, several key elements. One is, for me, uh, public policy, um, an expansion of beyond in terms of the traditional sense of limiting it to research um, and adding uh, quite consciously analysis and engagement. No think tank these days, whether it is in a developed or developing uh, country, can simply <coughs> develop, uh, conduct research and not engage not engage the public, not engage the media or policymakers. It is an essential element that redefines the role of think tanks um, as we have traditionally uh, known them. Uh, there's classifications that I use, geographic, political affiliation, ideological, um, and, and there's sort of research focus in, in the analysis that I do. Um, these are just some basic things. Um, you know, how do you define if a think tank is a think tank, a think and do tank, or a do tank? Um, and you know, in some respects, I have a minimum threshold. If they're not doing at least 30% of research, then they're not a think tank. Um, and the only really way to know in a definitive fashion is to look at their budget, look at what their outputs are, and look at their staffing patterns. It tells you the most about it, uh, an institution to really determine whether they're a think tank or not. <coughs> These institutions, in my mind, act as a bridge between ac the uh, academic and policy communities. They also 
serve as a bridge between civil society and government. Um, and they are um, designed, in my mind, to serve the public interest as an independent voice that translates applied and basic research into a language and form that is understandable, reliable, and accessible. Those are the three major quali qualities that policymakers look for. Is it reliable? Is it, can I understand it? Or is it in academic ease? Um, and <coughs> is it accessible? This is sort of a cynical slide. But. This is just to give you a graphic illustration of the dramatic uh, proliferation in the growth of think tanks. So it is a recent, relatively recent phenomenon, and the growth has been uh, substantial um, throughout the world, particularly <coughs> in Eastern and Central Europe and in Africa. There has been a uh, the most dramatic growth in the number of, of think tanks, uh, but globally there has been um, an expansion in terms of uh, think tanks around the world. Uh, this just gives you a quick sense of the breakdown by region. It is largely an OECD phenomenon. I mean, in terms of the large, the concentration of, of think tanks are um, in Western Europe and North America um, and, and Japan and um, Australia to be specific. But it, the dynamics and the, and, and the time that I have been tracking them, when I um, first started, there were as many think tanks in the United States as there were, were in the entire world. That the proliferation in just 10 years has sort of um, uh, demonstrates the expansive uh, growth of think tanks uh, around the world just from the work that I've been doing. Um, the typology, in my mind, there are basically <coughs> Uh, six categories of think tanks, um, and I'll just focus on the on the the, uh, the the second and the last because the rest, that, unless there you have some questions, um, are self-explanatory, quasi-independent. Uh, in my mind, is an institution that is totally independent structurally. It's not a part of government, but it is entirely funded by either a trade union um, or a uh, corporation. Um, so that its ability to be fully independent is limited by the fact that it has a sole source uh, funder. Quasi-governmental is a is a institution that is uh, separate from government, but all of its funding comes from from government. Yes. Do you have any figures on the death rate? Um, you had the birth rate there. Yes. Yeah. That is a question that has plagued me since my doctoral dissertation. It was. Uh, with one of my advisors asked, and I, uh, it's the the real problem with that. I mean, it, I've started to collect data on it, but no one, everyone heralds their coming into the world. Think tanks do not, uh, or no organization heralds its demise unless they're going out in a in a in a, in a fury. Um, so it's very hard to do that. But it, uh, I have tracked recently that there has been a decline in the rate of establishment of think tanks. I don't have data on the, on the actual number that has gone out of business. This obviously would be an interesting uh, to track that. And I, you know, there are certain cases that I have followed, you know, um, the, um, in, in, in particular areas, but no, I don't have uh, data and it's, it's something that I'm, you know, intrigued by, but it's near impossible to, to collect. <coughs> I've begun to, to identify what I consider the um, regional hubs for think tanks around the world. Um, and uh, these are uh, the ones that I consider where there's a significant concentration of think tank activity in terms of both not only think tanks within the country, but they also serve as a hub um, in terms of activity within the region. It's going to go, up, go through this. There are 425 think tanks in Africa in 42 countries that conduct research on a wide range of social, economic, uh, democratic, and political issues affecting the region. Since 1990, um, there's been a dramatic, notable increase in think tanks, especially in sub-Saharan Africa. Um, and in the area of AIDS, and 
It, um, Gates is wonderful, um, but you know, one of the recent things that we're tracking in terms of Africa is that there's tons of money for AIDS, but no money for malaria in terms of policy, in terms of think tanks. When we look at, at think tanks and look at their research agendas, um, there is every major, or most of the health-related think tanks in Africa have a AIDS component, but very few are conducting re uh, research on malaria in terms of from a policy standpoint. <coughs> um, think tanks in Africa re remain seriously underdeveloped and underfunded. Hopefully the initiative uh, that ULIT has um, launched with a hundred million dollar commitment just for ULIT alone um, for think tanks um, in developing countries will make it um, an improvement and their strategy is different than what has historically been the approach. They are going to provide endowment and they're going to look at um, supporting the capacity within the institution. This is just a breakdown in Africa um, by uh, the regional distribution of think tanks, and we have much more detailed analysis, but I'm just sort of giving a tour de force here as an overview. <coughs> this is a comparison I've done, done some, um, uh, some viability index in terms of regions of the world, looking at, you know, what makes an environment that is conducive for uh, the operation of think tanks and uh, what countries have think tanks and which ones do not and why. 49% um, of think tanks are founded after 1990. 44% of the think tanks in Africa uh, list the public as one of their um, target audiences. Um, no great surprise in that. Um, there's significant contract research. They all say that they're independent. I don't know what that means. Everyone says they're independent. Um, and in Africa, for instance, in many developing countries, you know, how independent can you be if 100% of your funding comes from the government? So um, I take that with a grain of salt, but I can't, um, without doing individual analysis of each institution, um, challenge their claim that they are independent. <coughs> I'm going to go through these so just in the sake of time. Um, there is um, an interesting break here in terms of, and is, I, I think a significant factor in Africa. It's uh, scholarly research, but a significant amount, which um, I think uh, is the applied, really highly applied aspects that 40% uh, of what occurs is, uh, or was reported, is in technical assistance. Um, the areas of research, most of which are not surprising, although you know, AIDS continues to loom large. Um, and I think funding from Gates and others has potentially on the agendas um, of countries a distorting effect on what they would see as their priorities. And that's one of the problems. This is just a list of the top 10 think tanks in Africa based on this um, survey that I uh, have conducted, which has a set of criteria. And then there are 150 experts who essentially rate um, the think tanks, and then all of the think tanks in the world can also um, vote. And that, those votes are tallied, um, and uh, then the lists are, are developed for every region of the world. Just sort of highlight, I'm going to spin through this <coughs> think tank, profiling think tanks in each region for the sake of time. Uh, the Middle East, this is the area where there's the most recent growth in think tanks. Um, historically, it's been state-to-state -state security issues, no surprise there. Most of, uh, you know, in terms of the findings of the, on the, on the uh, global level are really not a surprise so much as they validate um, hunches that people have and there's hard data behind it. Um, independent think tanks have begun to be established in, Eastern, uh, in the Middle East, um, but there's still significant constraints on their operation. And these are the, the t top 10 um, in the Middle East. In Asia, uh, 653 think tanks, 12% of the total. Uh, there's not surprising often where there are no think tanks. It usually tends to be a correlation between authoritarian regimes and closed um, societies. Um, the history in terms of Asia has been strategic and economic issues. 
and also in terms of the issue that was suggested in terms of networks, they, they have been very effective at creating um, economic networks of think tanks within the, the region. Um, the rest is pretty straightforward. Here are the top think tanks in, in uh, Asia. Um, Chinese Academy of Social Science um, comes on top, um, largely because of the, the influence it has. I think the others are a more accurate reflection of um, the uh, think tanks uh, and their uh, and the top think tanks within within the region. This is just a profile of China, which is an interesting case. I go and just finished a major paper on think tanks in China. The Chinese were not very pleased because I was not very flattering because they said I said there's 72 think tanks and they said well there are tons and you know more than that and I said okay fine show me your list I have a list I compiled it where's your list they then there's silence um, and uh, it's a you know it's a major uh, problem and they're there the basic position is that they feel that they're more open and think there's been dramatic change however in the face of it there's significant effort to really <coughs> register and limit the role, number, and influence of think tanks in China. These are just a profile of some of the others. And then just in terms of Latin America, we've identified 538, 10% of the think tanks in the world. Um, and in, in Latin America, it's really uh, as I was mentioning before I started, is probably one of the most stable regions in the world in terms of think tanks. And as you can see, there's really no correlation in terms of political influence in terms of countries that don't have think tanks. It's really a function of size. If you look at all the think tanks that do not have any think tanks, they're really tiny countries that may not, you know, it's clear they wouldn't be able to support it. 50% uh, of the think tanks in the region were established between 1980 and 2007. Um, largely domestic and, and economics and social policy, environment, education, and health. Um, there's really a scholarly and policy-oriented research and well-developed in Latin America because the environment has been so stable over time. And that's not to mean that there is no innovation. There is innovation, but it's a very stable relative to Africa and um, to Eastern and Central Europe and other regions which have had um, uh, explosive great, uh, growth and or um, cycles of, of uh, growth and then uh, collapse in terms of think tanks for political and other reasons. Okay, we have five minutes left. Okay, I'm finished. These are the leading think tanks in Latin America. And I just profile uh, the think tanks in Argentina. Civil society, in, in terms of concluding remarks, <coughs> important to development and consolidation of uh, liberal democracy. Um, I see them really as the canary in the mine, that if think tanks can operate within a country uh, unencumbered, uh, then it is a good indicator for the rest of civil society. And in many cases, in the analysis that I've done and what I describe as NGO pushback and have documented thoroughly <coughs> uh, regimes and there are about 20 that have used legal and extra means to really um, shut down NGOs, but particularly have gone after uh, think tanks because they often are the institution that creates the space um, legally and in some respects protects the space um, for other NGOs. And because of the political nature of the think tanks, they are uh, normally the first target um, that um, regimes that are unfriendly um, to civil society go after. Um, so there's, you know, this major thing. I'll just say a quick word about Obama. Uh, uh, for those of you who are interested, there's uh, two major think tanks in the United States, the Brookings Institution and the Center for American Progress. Um, in the analysis that I've done, which tracks very closely with it, um, Obama, uh, Obama is simultaneously has a dual personality, and the dual personality is reflected in those two institutions. He is simultaneously centrist um, and pragmatic and technocratic, 
and simultaneously progressive idealists and activists, which will create um, for, you, uh, for, you, for those outside of the United States a very messy and potentially incoherent foreign policy uh, that he, I think, has the capacity to manage uh, but will not be an easy task. But he has tilted, certainly in the early part of the administration, in terms of um, the institutions that he's looking at and, and the appointments that he's made uh, largely at Brookings. Most of his advisors in the campaign came either from Center for American Progress or from Brookings. So it's a consistent uh, reflection throughout his administration. Very good. Thank you very much.